Well, my name is Rob Digger. I am the former first lady of Flip Mode Squad, Buster Rhymes crew. I have been rhyming for eons. <laughs> I started out way back, Fuji's. Uh, I was featured on the score. I um, had a crew prior to the Flip Mode Squad called the Outsiders. I'm a Jersey native. Shout out to Alps, we all from Jersey. And I am an MC and a damn good one at that. I've been rhyming since elementary school, but I think, uh, I'm gonna say I got my official like break into the music business. Mm, 96. 96 was when I signed my first record deal to Electra Records. And I mean, I did a lot of grinding leading up to that. A whole lot of please listen to my demo, a whole lot of showcases. But uh, I ultimately was at the right place at the right time. Shout out Q-Tip. I got in Q-Tip's ear and just kept it real with him. I was pregnant at the time. I was in my third trimester. So I just had a real nice conversation with him. Like, yo, I got like less than a month to have, his, uh, to, to have his baby and I need a deal before she gets here. One thing led to another. I performed at SOBs, which is like a, a, a very big, uh, I guess, like milestone to, uh, venue in New York. And we were doing a Lyricist Lounge showcase and I performed there pregnant to death. And he saw me and it was, it was just on for me. I, I had my deal before my child got here. That's all I know. <laughs> the first time I even picked up a pen, I was like 12 years old. And I started out just doing it as a hobby, elementary school showcases. And even through high school, like I told myself, I, I always wanted to put an album out. But at that time, I didn't realize you know, the success that you can have putting out it. Like back then, yo, yo, MTV Raps was the, for me was considered, I made it. I, I would have just been happy to, you know, to get on TV. And, um, and I think when Queen Latifah, once I saw Queen Latifah doing it, and being that she was another female, artist from Jersey, it made me feel like, wait a minute, this, you know, this isn't something made up. This isn't something that only people from New York do. That was another thing, too. I thought, like, you know, I thought you had to be, like, from New York to be on TV when I was a baby. So, <laughs> when I saw Queen Latifah doing it, it was like, wait a minute, okay, here's somebody that goes to school right down the street, and she is doing the damn thing. I think that is when I started, like, really taking my demo seriously and, and going out and really as opposed to like just flipping somebody's instrumental like really going out and finding my own producer to produce a demo for me that, that I could physically shop so definitely definitely Queen Latifah and I had to be mm, I had to be maybe 16 or 17 at that time but I've been telling myself my whole life I was putting out an album but I think like when I was physically able to really do it myself, of course, was by the time I got out of high school. It was like, okay, I don't have to uh, go to school today. Today I can cut school and go to my producer's house, but I'm not advocating cut school at all. That's not what I'm saying. Don't take that from this message. I did not attend school for music. Music, or, that was like the furthest thing from any of my courses. I was actually studying to be an electrical engineer. Like I, I really excelled in, in the math and sciences. I, I was like, everybody just knew I was destined to be some sort of engineer because I was like in my, I was in high school taking like college calculus and physics. So I, I was really, really into the, you know, the, the Einstein stuff. And I went to NJIT for two years, but I just, I don't know, I just felt myself like, not really paying attention to the professor. Like, I, I should be taking notes, I should be listening to him cap on about Newton's Law, but I was really sitting there like, ooh, that new BNB record is so dope. So, it, I just, my mind just kept drifting to music, and then ultimately I had to just keep it real with my parents. Like, yo, know, I, I, I'm wasting 
y'all money, I'm wasting my time, like I'm not, you know, I don't see me, you know, I don't see me doing this in real life, in real life I see me doing this. And they, you know, they, they were disappointed, the, the whole family was disappointed because in my family, no, you know, nobody leaves school, you, you go to college, you go to graduate school, you, you know, you go to medical school, you go to law school, like there's no such thing as dropping out of college to be an artist, so that was, uh, that's what I did, and I'm proud of my decision. I think I started feeling like, okay, I can really do this. Well, even from, from the beginning, I've always, for whatever, I've always stood out from the females, like even in elementary school when it was like the guys against the girls, like there was one really dope dude named Cornelius. I don't know where he is now, but yeah, you you were the fire under my ass. But um, whenever he rhymed, and he, he was like an LL at that time, because he was real good with like coming off the head and, and, and being that like comedian rapper to just, you know, make people laugh at you. and Whenever he rhymed, everybody would just look at me like, uh, what you gonna say, Rob? What you gonna do? Like, it was always left up to me to deal with this dude. So, it, it's always been that kind of situation. Like, I, I've all, whatever cipher or situation I've been in, I, I've always, I, I don't know, I, I've always just managed to, to be the one that, that excelled the most just on the MC tip. And I'm, I'm not even saying this to, like, to my own horn. It, it just, it, it, you know, it, it's just what it was. Like people approached me, or or made it a situation where like, okay, you know, you think you're tough, battle her. And I'm like, huh? I'm somewhere studying my calculus. Like, what I got to do with anything? But you know, that, that was like the test. If you think you fresh, then come see me. So, um, but I think like seriously, professionally, when I I had a partner and. Once we separated, we were, we were signed to DOS Effects for, for a while. Once we separated and I started like doing solo stuff again, it was it was kind of clear like with everybody we worked with. At that time, I was with the Outsiders. It was like okay, her solo stuff versus my solo stuff. It's kind of you know, it's always been kind of evident who like the lyrical one. Like she was more of a of a character type of MC, and I, I was just always about the bars. And I studied Fuji rap, I studied the Juice Crew, and it, it just you know it just showed in my music that that I was really like a spitter. Definitely now I'm way more lackadaisical with the music. I mean, at this point, I feel like I'm just doing what I want when I want. But you know, for new artists that are trying to, you know, get their foot in the door, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It, it's a lot harder because you almost have to be a celebrity before you even, you know, before a label will even pay you any attention. And, you know, they just don't, when, when I, in my era, they actually groomed artists. Like they found talented people and they put you through what they call artist development and they, they groomed you, you know, they put people in charm school. They took you, you know, they had you go through makeovers. They had, uh, you know, if there were any weaknesses, it was in your, within your craft, you know, they hired these people to come in and, and, and clean it up, the producers, whatever. The, you know, whatever, whatever needed to happen, you know, that used to happen for artists and, and a lot of money was spent doing that. Like artists would really spend a million, two million dollars be between like recording studio sessions and, and just whatever it is they were developing for you. So it is harder in the sense that you kind of have to figure all of that stuff out on your own before you can even get your foot in the door. But on the, you know, on the flip side, there's way more resources available to people now that we did not have. We did not have Twitter. We, we could not just sit at home and, and tweedle our little thumbs and talk directly to superstars. Like you, with, between the blogs and, and getting music out there and stuff, like it's, it's really up to you how bad you want it 
Like, but it, it's it's definitely doable. You got people that are, you know, becoming famous on their own, and now you got labels jumping on their bandwagon. So it's definitely possible. Like the the internet has changed everything. All the resources is, is there at your disposal. You just got to utilize all of them, and you got to be fresh. Like I don't care what everybody else is talking about. You got to have dope bars if you want to last. But that's you know that's my spin on it. For someone who has never done music in their life, who has just woke up and said, okay, this is what I want to do, where do I begin? Um, run the other way! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what you need to do, okay, first, first and foremost, you just, you have to ask yourself, what is it you want out of the business? Like, do you want to, do you see yourself doing this forever? Um, do you just want to, you know, Get a quick hit out there, cash out, and just, you know, rack up some dough real quick to move on to your next really, you know, real big idea. Like, you, you got to be honest with yourself and ask yourself what it is you, you want out of it. And I guess when you, when, you can answer your, when you can answer that question honestly, that will dictate a lot of, like, your next moves. And, and just always remember... First impressions are everything. They can make you or break you in this business. They will make you or break you. So if you, you know, if you want to live by the code and you're a diehard MC, but you're listening to the radio and you think that's what you have to do to get on and you start making those type of records, then you have to, re you have to understand what comes with that. And if you're not consistent in, you know, in that realm, you're gonna get forgotten about as soon as the next one comes along. So just always keep that in mind when you know when you're, I guess, trying to make come up with that hit record. Um, I think the best advice is just to do you, really, and establish your own fan base doing what you do. And as long as you're consistent and confident enough with it, you, you will establish a fan base. And those fans will ride with you forever as long as, you know, as long as you do you. It, it may, you know, it may be a longer struggle, it may be a harder road, but I think in the long run you'll be happier when you can, you know, if, if that's what you want to do, you can 10, 20 years later you can be a Wu-Tang clan and still be on tour and still be successful because you have patented your own style and you, you just branded your own sound and, and, and you stuck with it and you believe in it. So it's yours. I'm just me. Cop cars, just bomb bars. Look how shit fell apart since I took some time off. Say, when the last.